Hi there, it's your friend Phil, Project Management Trainer and Coach. Today, we're going to be talking about process dependencies. Now, this is similar to dependencies talked about in Chapter 6 of the PMBOK Guide, but it has a focus on project processes. So I call it process dependencies. So as you know, in Chapter 6, if you say task B is dependent on A, it means that you have to get something from A before B can be done or task D is dependent on C, and so on. Perhaps you have multiple dependencies. You could have a task dependent on four other processes. Well, that's how you need to look at the PMBOK guide. There's a lot of processes in the PMBOK guide, but you need to be aware of the dependencies. So I coined this phrase, I call it process dependency theory. What is process dependency theory? It states, one, every process in the PMBOK guide is dependent on another process, except in the case of develop project charter, which is a process you know. The second is the whole of the processes is greater than the sum of their individual parts. And the third is every process in the PMBOK guide leads to another process by way of its outputs, except close project or phase, which is a terminal process. So think about this, think about this. One, every process, every single one, with the exception of develop project charter, is dependent on another process. And that means when you take a look at those data flow diagrams in the PMBOK guide, you see linkages from one process leading to another, except in the case of develop project charter. Number two, the whole of the processes is greater than the sum of the individual parts. You could understand one process in isolation, like develop project charter, or you could understand control quality and control cost and direct and manage project work in isolation. But the whole of the processes, page 61, looking at the whole thing and having a very clear picture of how all the flows go, is greater than the sum of their individual parts. So what good is it if you know develop project charter, but you don't know how it links to develop project management plan or identify stakeholders, or you don't understand how identify stakeholders leads to communication. You see, and this is why lots of people have trouble on the PMP exam. They know things with a one track mind, but there's no room for integration. And that's why I have the video that's called the PMBOK guide main lines. You want to take a look at the PMBOK guide main lines video and see how processes integrate and begin to think like that. Because if you're not thinking like that, when you get into the exam, you will be forced to think like that. And there are lots of people who I dare say have passed the PMP exam by chance because they've not really sat down to think about the linkages. But it so happens that when they're put to the test, they're able to bring it. Not everyone has the opportunity. Some people find out for the first time, wow, I know this process so well, but I can't for the life of me remember what it leads to. And that's the whole purpose of this video, to sensitize you to the fact that as you study for your PMP exam, your CAPM exam, know the linkages, know what leads to another process. It is so important. Every process in the PMBOK guide leads to another process by way of its outputs, except close project or phase, which is a terminal process. And what that means is you get to close project or phase, what do you see? What do you see as the outputs? They are things that do not go to other places. They are things that lead to the organization's repository. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now, all this stuff is exemplified in the book that I wrote called PMP exam IQ test. It's a phenomenal book. I've used it to train several firms across the world. And one thing I notice when people really use this book in all truthfulness, they do great on the exam. When they go through the book, because it has 40 data flow tests, and it also has over 300 open-ended questions. I would highly recommend it. It's on Amazon. And I don't recommend it just because I wrote it. I truly believe this book will add tremendous value to several people who struggle with the ITTOs, the dreaded ITTOs.
But you cannot blame the ITTOs. Again, think about the dependency theory. It's not the fault of the ITTOs. It's the fault of the person who does not know how to combine the big picture, the whole of the processes. It's that person who doesn't understand how to integrate outputs from one process that become inputs to another. That's where a lot of people's problem lies. Okay. So let's take a look here. I'm going straight into the book. And part one of the book is all about data flows. This is pretty much how it works. If you take a look, you've got a little quiz here. The project charter is an output of something, and that project charter is an input to develop project management plan. And develop project management plan, in turn, has an output that leads to close project or phase. So the, the big question is, what is that question mark? And what is that question mark? And that's what 40 of the quizzes in the book are really all about. But it gets more complicated as you get along. So let's take a look here. If you take a look at the answer, you can see develop project charter is the process that we were looking for. Gives you the project charter. And you can see the project management plan is the process that uh, is the output, I beg your pardon, that you were looking for from the process that goes to close project or phase. All right. So are you ready? Let's take a little quiz and let's go to the first problem in the book. The first problem in the book is from integration, the second integration. As you go along, it goes from integration to scope to, you know, so on, following the knowledge areas. So let's take a look here. What comes from develop project charter that goes to develop project management plan? That was the first one we looked at. This will be project charter. That's what I would put. And then if you take a look from develop project management plan, we have several arrows from develop project management plan but if you remember develop project management plan what can you say about it it only has one output right so the only output it could be that goes into these places is the project management plan right that would be the answer and that's exactly what i would stick into these processes here project management plan would be there and here. So let me zoom out so you can see the whole picture here. So we've got project charter going in here, project management plan coming out of these. Now the big question for you is, what comes out of monitor and control project work that has work something something? You see what I'm saying? Now, there are some possibilities. It could be work performance data. It could be work performance information. And do you know the last one it could be? Could be work performance reports. So you do need to have known your WPD, WPI, WPR sequence, right? So if you know that, you know that monitor and control project work is where you churn out those reports, right? So this is where you have all your work performance information going into this process. And out of this process, you have work performance reports. Now, where does work performance reports go? It goes to a number of places. You see how this book is making you think about what you do and do not know. If you do know, you're pulling on what you do know, you're exercising your PMP muscle. You're exercising your PMBOK muscle, see? And then you're also exerting yourself to think beyond what you know, to see if you can make those linkages. That's why I would highly recommend this book, not because I wrote the book, but I've seen people get tremendous value from it. The first class I did after I wrote the book was with the FBI, and every single one of those students killed the exam because they had exercised their PMP muscle. And not just from these exercises, but by others. But anyway, let's focus on getting this sorted. This is an input to a process that gives you something else that goes to direct and manage project work. Can you make that linkage? Can you exert your PMP muscle? 
the process here that I'm going to go with is one that gives me something called what are the inputs to direct and manage project work? I know we've got the project management plan, can't be that. Even if EEFs and OPAs were on the radar, can't be that. What could it be? Ah, approved change requests. That's definitely one, see? ACRs, where do approved change requests come from? comes from the perform integrated change control process. You see, that's why you need to practice this stuff because you won't know that you don't know it until you try it out. See, so this is really going to help you on your exam. Let's take a look at the answer. Seems like we got it. Yep, those are the answers. Approved change request project management plan, and so on, okay? So that is actually the first problem in the book. You want to try another one? Let's go to a more difficult one. Let's go to exercise two in the book. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to give you a few seconds to see what you do know to try and figure out what you don't. So. Just make it a little bit big so you can see the top. Okay, what goes at the top? You want to write your answers down as we go along? That might be much better. So why don't you take a blank piece of paper or on your computer, open up Notepad, because I know you're looking at this on your phone or computer. Type in what you think that question mark is. Okay. Let's go down to the next ones. Direct and manage project work has an output that goes to perform integrated change control. And it has an input that comes from performing integrated change control. Do you know what those are? Monitor and control project work. It has two inputs to perform integrated change control. You know what those are? Direct and manage project work has an output that goes to control quality. And then control quality has an output that goes to validate scope. Do you know what those are? And then validate scope has an output that goes to close project or phase. And it's associated, that output is associated with another output, this time from closed project or phase. So let's take a look at the entire picture. And you take a stab, write down this stuff, and let's see what you know and what you don't. All right, well, let's type the answers in. This is what my students go through in the classes. We do these tests and we come up with the logic. So the first one here is the project chart itself, as you probably guessed. Okay. From direct and manage project work going into perform integrate change control and at the same time from monitor and control project work, we have similar outputs which become inputs called change requests. So you have a change request coming from both direct and manage and monitoring control. Those both go into perform integrated change control. All right. So from monitoring control project work, we have a second one that becomes an input to perform integrated change control. And that is called work performance reports. You see the logic here. If you are working with a change control board, very often they would need to see your work performance reports to make a judgment call on if a change request should be approved or not. So the client wants X, Y, Z, and you take a look at your work performance reports and you're so far behind or so far over budget, 
that management may think it's a bad idea to make cosmetic changes that will further adjust parts of the schedule, or it could be something totally different. Because these work performance reports, they're all over the place. See? So when you see this kind of relationship, you should ask yourself, ah, why does work performance reports become an input to perform integrated change control? See? All right. Director Manage Project Work receives an output from Perform Integrate Change Control. We talked about this previously. This is Approved Change Requests. See? Then Director Manage Project Work has an output that goes to Control Quality. The infamous deliverables. Deliverables. This is definitely one of PMI's sacred cows. You definitely want to know that deliverables come from direct and managed project work. Or what have you been doing? I mean, that's the whole reason why you're managing the project, right? Control quality gives you an output. And if you've watched my main lines video on YouTube, you probably know this already because you've seen those linkages. So from control quality, we get something that goes to validate scope. And it's called verified deliverables because your deliverables go into control quality. You inspect them. And if they're good to go, you put your stamp of approval called verified deliverables. That goes to validate scope. And from validate scope, you get an output that is closely related with close project or phase. This is called accepted deliverables and accepted deliverables if you're really following the yellow brick road to the end of the story what happens accepted deliverables goes into closed project or phase it's your final product service or result transition which is a direct output as a result of your accepted deliverables right so that's what I would have been looking for here, even though there's several outputs from close project or phase. So this is final product service or result transition. Final product service or result transition is what we're looking for here. All right. And with that, we've come to the end of a look at these process dependencies. I hope that helps give you an idea of what exactly you need to be looking for as you study the PMBOK guide. I'm going to give you one more problem, and I want you to take a close look at the screen. I want you to see if you know what comes in this problem. I'm going to show it to you for a minute. You can hit your pause button. Then I'm going to show you the answer to round this up. All right, I am about to show the answer, so spoiler alert. <laughs> if you haven't written down your answers, you want to pause it before I show you the answer here. All right, let's go. And that's the answer. So I hope you find this helpful. I hope you begin to think about these project dependencies, these process dependencies. As you look at page 61, don't look at it in a linear fashion. Try to keep in mind the process dependency theory. All the best in your study.